up, ladies and germs. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Gray's Taproom Podcast. I am your co-host, the Trash Can Tabby, and with me, as always, my Batman, George Clooney. You cunt. <laughs> co-host. You know, that would be funny if George Clooney actually played Batman, but he didn't, so. <laughs> Nuts to you. <laughs> Bazinga. Gotcha. All right. So we've got. You, some... <laughs> you just don't want to bypass that. Just it doesn't matter. Stupid bitch. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> you love All me right. because I bought you these sour. Well, bought us these sours. Yes. Uh, what are the names of these sours and where are they from? Well, of course, it is the Kentucky Lily Quiet Science American Sour Ale from the one and only Mile Wide. Yeet. Um, this is made, of course, in Louisville, Kentucky, and it is cranberry, tangerine, and lemon. And this says, oh, and it's a 5%. Not bad. Most sours are. Mm -hmm. uh, it's made in Louisville, Kentucky, the only place where people throw a two-week party for two for a two-minute race. Ooh, that is pretty. It is almost a, a pink kind of a... Well, yeah, it's a Kentucky it's got a lily. Pink tint to it. So, for those of you listening, an actual lily. I will be don't... posting a photo of it on our socials right now. <laughs> if you haven't already seen it. Uh, so, a real lily is um, cranberry juice and vodka and something else, like a lemon or I don't know. I drink mint juleps and bourbon like a real Kentucky girl. Um, but I'm excited to try this. It's not going to fit in my glass. Title of your sex tape. All right. So Wait, here what? we go. What? 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 You ready to try this? Yes. I want to smell it first. Oh, listen to that. Oh, nice. It's got a fizzy. <laughs> okay. All right. The hell was that? I thought the dog was thrown up, but they're both asleep. <laughs> All right. Cheers. Let's Cheers. go. That's really good. I bet it would be better if it Super was a little floral. bit colder. Yeah. I mean, it's good, though. I like it. It's really, it's really fruity. Floral. Yeah. Super fruity. And I'm into it. Almost tastes like Fruit Loops. A little bit. Like the after. Phew, Without like... the milk. Well, yeah. No one puts milk in their beer. No. Unless you're drinking a milk stout. But um, Yeah. So. Huh. All right. So, well, I okay. like this. Okay, so take another drink. Okay. Because you really get the lemon on that second one. Oh, you do. So it's it's kind of like a flavor changer. It comes change it comes flavor. the the after is kind the, of lemony as well. The entrance for me was the lemon. And then the tangerine kind of hangs on the tongue. The cranberry is not quite there, but it is like the tart. Yeah. I really like this. This one's a good it's one. It's delicious. Of course, mile wide. Another absolute Banger. monster of a beer, yeah. Of course. Shout out to them. Mile wide, friends I'll, of the show. Uh, I'll uh, I'll be putting this on the socials for everyone to check out, and I will def tag mile wide, obviously. So. I'm telling you, that is a that is a glass of Fruit Loops or Fruity Pebbles. Yeah. My God. Oh, for sure. That's so good. So speaking of Fruity Pebbles. All right, let's get at this because I have waited <laughs> far. We have waited far too long. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome one of our very dear friends, friend of the show, friend of the show, yeah. just a friend, uh, fellow uh, Whiskey Hell insider. Shout out to Whiskey Hell insider. Give it up for our very, very good friend, Mr. Beard of Liberty. Yay. <laughs> Howdy, folks. Uh, thanks for having me. I, you know, I have I, I'm approaching this like I do most of streams and other shows and podcasts that i'm invited to yeah i have no idea what i'm doing but i'm gonna try so here i am and for, i've got some whiskey to help get me through it you're you're like the uh did you ever watch parks and rec did you ever watch oh that? yes i have no idea what i'm doing i just know i'm doing it really really well <laughs> he's andy he's the andy <laughs> he's dwyer, the dwyer. <laughs> yes yeah because i try to i try to talk myself down and aaron also a good buddy of all of ours. Uh, yeah. He won't let that happen. He keeps telling me, shut up. You're good at this. So I'm just <laughs> taking his word for it. He, he does that as he's telling himself 
the same thing that you're telling yeah. her. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I actually told him one time in, a, in a, I think probably in the whiskey insider, whiskey hell insiders chat, like let's not get in a back and forth about who is worse at doing our job. Let's, <laughs> Cause we will be here all day. Let's just accept <laughs> that we're better than we think we are. <laughs> no, I suck more. No, I suck more. No, I suck more. That's the same thing. As you hang up first. No, you hang up first. No, you hang up first. No, Except it's two insufferable curmudgeons grumbling at each other. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, but we love we love Aaron so much. He's he's such yes. a good person. He's, my twin. He's yeah. He is your twin. Yes. He's my twin. <laughs> Very strangely, years apart, but we're twins. <laughs> not that many years. No, not that many years. For some reason, like dots were connected. Like we have the same tastes and the same personality and the same. Yeah. Like it's just it's weird. It's a weird combo. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it. Yeah. So it's... you married Aaron? No. <laughs> no, I don't. Well, I don't like. He, that. he married. He married the virgin with, with better hair. Mm. Well, yeah, that works. <laughs> we don't know what Aaron looked like with hair, though. I do. <laughs> I have a picture mm. of Aaron in high school. Oh, wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. I. Uh... Why would he release such blackmailable material to you? Because he loves me and trusts me. He lost a bet. <laughs> <laughs> he lost. She has. She has uh, information that could lead to the. <laughs> <laughs> to the to the, down to the arrest. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, he's that gotta behave himself, or he'll get, get, be a uh, Clinton. <laughs> he's gonna, yeah. <laughs> and you know, this is actually hysterical that we're talking about Aaron right now because Aaron is one of our biggest fans, and he not only is subscribed to our Patreon, yeah. where he gets the first listen to the unedited show then he goes back and listens to it again when it drops on monday he listens to our show twice yes a week he says he has it on rotation i, on... I don't even listen to it once <laughs> <I listen. laughs> technically i'm listening to it right now right and then editing whoever edits uh it's yours i edited last week no who did the intro you did I you did, did. Kimo <laughs> Um, well, anyway, so yeah, but he he said he listens to it when it drops on Patreon, and then he said just because he before he subscribed to the Patreon, he uh, clicked the little bell notification button to where it'll download automatically. Oh yeah, and your list of of podcasts to listen, and he says it downloads anyway, so it kind of just goes right into it. Yeah. Well, yeah. well I mean, well, that's a bro right there. Yeah, for sure. He said he also likes to know the jokes. Like he knows when the jokes are coming beforehand and laughs because he knows the punchline's coming. <laughs> He's like that person in the movie that's seen it already. Yeah. <laughs> Screaming he leaned back. over and go, <laughs> you're going to love this part. Watch, watch. <laughs> <laughs> I can see him doing that. Dude, dude check, check out this part of the podcast. <laughs> oh, God, I love you. Calls one of his coworkers over, like unplug his earbuds, go, oh, come, come here. Listen to this joke. It's great. <laughs> Listen to my. Wasn't that great? And they're just still staring at him, like, "What the hell, man? I'm busy." <laughs> You're gonna say, "Listen to Mike throw up." I well, that time I threw up on the show. You've thrown up. Oh, you didn't throw up that time that you shot that was Patreon. The IPA. That was Patreon, also. Yeah. That was a taproom recast. Yeah. I hope to never hear that. That gets to me. The audio. Mm. Yeah. Well, then don't go back and listen to episode. I'll have to. I don't remember. Whatever no. it is, it has Tropic Thunder. We're talking about Tropic Thunder. Yeah, we did. We did a review on Tropic Thunder. We used oh, that's to... a shame. I like that movie. No, we love that movie. Well, well, okay. So, little backstory about the puke thing is we. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna sit back, get comfortable. This is, this is my stairway to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than your wild turkey story that's been told a million times. God, I... Yeah, you don't have to. People can go back and listen to that episode. Yeah, do that. Episodes. Uh, so we used to do a shot out wheel for all of our fellow indie podcasters. Uh, we would find a shot or make a shot associated with their podcast name or, you know, what they were about. Uh, one of the shots was called gag. What was it? The gag ball gag or the gag me or gag on me or something. Oh, the shot. Yeah, the shot. I can't remember uh, the name of it. It was gag something yeah so we did mm. uh it stands by its name <laughs> no i liked it 
it was a yeah because it was a fucking bloody it was a bloody mary it was shot. it was almost a bloody mary shot i hate hate if bloody mary was the only alcoholic drink in the world i'd be sober for my whole life no see i love bloody mary i, I hate, love well, bloody mars i hate tomato oh <laughs> no see i i used to I, I mean i didn't have any like physical revulsion to them it was just i didn't like them i was a kid and then i grew up and i was an adult and i still didn't like them and it was like 10 years ago just all of a sudden a switch flipped in my brain and god damn i love tomatoes i'll just eat them like an apple I've done that since I was a kid. My grandfather actually had a huge garden made up and he planted different types of tomatoes just for me. I'd come over and that would be my meal for the entire weekend. I mean, I I can't say that I actually do that very often, eating them like an apple because the beard and the juices, that is a mess. (laughs) I mean, there's certain things that you just, you sacrifice whenever you just go full beard. Like I will not eat hot wings in public. Everything around here, the mustache turns orange. It's just, it's gross. Nobody wants to see that. You've got blue cheese dripping. See, I have that's that an at home food. I have that issue with like sandwiches, burgers, and stuff. The sides of my beard here, yes, will, the sandwich will push the hair into my mouth. And then I, yeah, it's, it might actually just be the your mouth opening. We're getting into beard talk here. See, I, I like my mustache a little bit longer. But when I open my mouth, just the motion of that pulls these edges in yeah. and basically puts them directly in the in the direction of food. So line of fire. Um, so yeah. Me, me throwing up. Yeah. Fin- finish. Oh, up. yes. So all of these different types of shots throughout what, three months, four months? Yeah. Give it's about me. 12 or 15 different shots once a week we would do for people. And uh, and then uh, it, it was for uh, a podcast. uh Fuck you, Big Nick. Um, Shout out to Big Nick. Fuck you, Big Nick. <laughs> You're awesome. Um, he tried to cause start shit today on Twitter again. Shocking. Ooh, I was like, oh, did you miss me? Um, so it was the it was pretty much a Bloody Mary in a shot, and Mike's like the whole time like, oh, I'm not gonna, I can't, I can't do it, I can't do it. And I was like, three, two, one, shot. And he took the shot and grabbed the trash can, and you can hear him in the background going, oh. it was. It was hilarious to me. <laughs> Not so much for him. It was awful. And then he goes, it's coming out of my nose. It was so funny. We had to cut a lot of the episode out because every time I would cough, I would get like tomato taste, like residue phlegm. And I'd have to go back downstairs to the bathroom. And it was awful. Oof. Not doing that again. So, yeah, we have had that on the show uh there's videos of him almost throwing up because he decided it's on our youtube channel yeah in he, the uh in the, the tiktok too isn't it or in the shorts it's, it's not the, on the tiktok no it's not on tiktok just on the he lost a recast and i got him a triple ipa which we you know we despise ipas they're so gross and i did that as his punishment for losing the episode a triple ipa <laughs> which means it's triple gross Yes. I mean, the, the people who like IPAs drink triples because they hate themselves. Yeah. <laughs> it's self mutilation. Have you ever seen the video of uh, Norm MacDonald and Dave Keckner? And Dave Keckner was talking about how he likes to drink IPAs. And you got to Mac- send him that video. And Norm MacDonald turns to, uh, I forget who else was on the panel, but he goes, So what do you like to drink besides fucking jizz? <laughs> <laughs> Norm was one of the greats, man. Oh, he was the best. Rest in power, King. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and he delivered so well and so dryly. I loved all of his OJ Simpson jokes. Yeah. I think you should have got a raise on SNL, not fired. <laughs> I mean, he he was he was a king at, at just taking a seemingly pointless meandering story driving the host nuts because they're trying to get in questions and wrap up. He's like, no, 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 no. Let me finish this. And he just keeps going and going and going. And it's this tiny little punchline at the end that barely has anything to do with the story. And you don't care. You yeah. know, laugh anyway, because it's goddamn Norm McDonald. I mean, he was comedic genius. Up mm. with, uh, I mean, what was that movie that he was in? Billy Madison. No. Oh, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Grown Ups. Was he in? Yeah. Yeah, he, he come in, down the water slide and his, oh, under, his cameo. His, yeah. yeah. That's what I remember him in. I don't remember him in a lot of movies. He did some like movies, a couple through his SNL run. Yeah. And maybe one or two after. 
but he mostly. I mean, from what I remember, it was, it was mostly just kind of like guest spots. He was never really the front and center. Yeah. Which made it even better. To me. Yeah. I think so. I have to burp, but it's stuck. Is it? Yep. Yeah, you don't want to force those. You're going to have a trash can. Not you trash can, but a mic <laughs> trash can moment. No, there's one behind yeah, that. We each have our own garbage each can. Have okay. <laughs> They need to be I just realized that my statement was might get confused your, between <laughs> your title and the object, actual receptacle. So from one trash to, that to another, here's my vomit. <laughs> <laughs> Very accepting. Um, <laughs> and dumb. also, I forgot to forgot to shout out. I was considering getting some Texas beers today, but I thought, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it right. Plus, I'm a basic bitch and don't have a lot of money. So, uh, more Evan Williams Kentucky bourbon. What is Love that? It. Evan Williams. Evan? Oh, nice. Evan Williams. Oh. It's their white label. It's their bottled in bond. Um, okay. Really, the only big difference there is it has to be 100 proof, and every grain put into it has to come from the same growing season. So it's a little bit more difficult for them to kind of keep flavors similar. So you get a little bit more variation than like you would for most kind of budget whiskeys where they can mix and every, everything together across who knows how many years. Right. Okay. I don't think I've had that one. It's great. It punches above its weight class as far as cost. Uh, since it's 100 proof, you can mix it well. You can put ice in it and it stands up. Um, it goes And if lot. you don't mind taking a punch to the face, it's great sipping. Yeah. It, it is a good sipping bourbon. Um, bourbon. It goes good with a cigar, too. Oh, dude, any bourbon cooks good with a cigar. Not any bourbon. Yeah, huh? Not any bourbon. Bourbon and cigar is like a hamburger and french fries. Okay, so benchmark? No one drinks that. Yeah, then why do they keep it on the shelf? Well, because we have crackheads. <laughs> that Valley Station? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> or the ones down See, the street by the Circle K. In my neck of the woods, people who would drink like in that manner, they'd come in because I worked at a liquor store for a little while. They'd get the Taka Vodka, oh. the cheapest plastic bottle, 1.5 liter, and they'd get a full six of them. And they'd be back in two days. And then suddenly they weren't back because their liver exploded probably and nobody ever heard from them again. Died in an alleyway. Yeah. See, it's sad, but my boss is like the money they made. I mean, I think our lowest one here is. Well, I know Heaven Hill's on it. Do people drink Heaven Hill vodka on purpose? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like free yeah. will? Yeah, that's America, baby. No, that's the that's the vodka you make your um, bathtub hooch. Your yeah, your bathtub hooch or your jungle it's, juice in. It's basically mm. prison hooch. Yeah, just cool. yeah. Ugh. No, I don't know if you've ever had Benchmark bourbon. Ugh. Can't say that I have. It's in a plastic bottle with a green label. <sighs> it's almost as bad. Have you tequila? Do you know tequila? A little bit. I Montezuma? prefer mezcal. Have you heard Which of Montez one? Montezuma tequila? No. That one's also in a plastic bottle. Oh, God, it's so it bad. It's so bad. <laughs> it gives you Montezuma's revenge. I don't like tequila anyway. But Benchmark is absolutely disgusting. Oh, my gosh. That is like if you poured bourbon through an old gym sock and then squeezed it into <laughs> the bottle, <laughs> called it Benchmark. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've had some bad ones. I just don't really recall because since I worked and I sold them, I would buy little 50 mil bottles of basically anything I could find so I could have a taste profile and recommend stuff. So there were plenty of them I came across that was just like, I feel like I'm licking the like a floor that was just mopped but hasn't been rinsed. It's chemically oh. and dirty at the same time. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, and then I just block it out of my brain because I'm like, I, I see that label. I'm just going to pretend like it doesn't exist. It's like that Black Mirror episode where it's just static. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, no, that sounds rough. That mm -hmm. sounds that sounds pretty rough. I don't know if I could handle something like that. There were some well, there were some gyms out there that are, you, you'd stumble across. But yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I. Oh, actually, no, I take that back. It's Kentucky Tavern. It's Barton's. 19, uh, 1792 Kentucky Tavern that is the worst that is that's even worse than Benchmark I don't oof. 
that one. No, because I was wondering about Heaven's Hill because that's like an overall company that makes a whole bunch of pretty decent bourbons. Oh, Heaven, Heaven if Hill. I remember, if, if, if I remember right. Yeah, yeah, Heaven Hill's out here. I think um, Angel's Envy makes the best bourbon, but that's just me. Benchmark is from uh, Buffalo Trace. That's still pretty bad, though. Well, <laughs> um, well, look at them. Technically, pours out. Uh, what was the one you said, said Mike, just now? The you said oh, makes the best. Angel's Envy. Yes, not technically a bourbon because they flavor it with port. Yeah, that's true. That's, I mean, but that's getting into the weeds right the around like whiskey laws and things like that. And there's so many stupid things yeah. where you can think that you, you as a company, you have your label where everything is where it should be, but you miss one tiny little detail. And suddenly you have to recall all of that product and spend all the time relabeling it oh, uh, or yeah. otherwise you're facing fines that compound daily. Yeah. It's stupid. I still want to try rabbit hole. I have not tried rabbit yes. hole yet. Have you ever had bird dog? The uh, that's, okay, yes, yeah, the peanut butter. No, because oh. I I like peanut butter and I like bourbon. I don't think I'd like them together. I don't like very many flavored bourbons or, or whiskeys this, in general. I don't either, but this one it'll it'll it might surprise you. They, okay, they also make a salted caramel, a blackberry. Um, um, what is it cinnamon. you mix with it to make the PB and J cocktail? Uh, any kind of berry uh, liqueur. Okay. You layer it. Any kind. Yeah. Okay. I I, I remember you had said something about it, but I couldn't remember if there was a we used, specific one. We used the uh, Starlight Blackberry Bourbon. Okay. The one from across the river. That shit was so good. That was a good bourbon. Mm. Doesn't um, Huber's? Mm-hmm. Is that where Hubers. it comes from? Yep. Okay. Yep. Oh, and they have their own bourbon there too. Yeah. Oh, did we have a sick? Yeah, Huber's. It's awesome. Winery, it's, orchard. It's on what? Five hundred acres. Something like more, that. A thousand yeah. acre property. Oh that man, sounds cool. Winery, distillery, all in one boat. And you see, have... there's. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I was gonna say that's one of the things that you know. I love Texas. Love my state. But one of the, like the holdovers that I just wish they would get rid of is their dumbass alcohol laws. Because there's so many restrictions on what distilleries can do. Really? They can't ship they can't ship from their distillery. They have to ship to a distributor. Then the distributor has to sell it to a store. Then you can buy it from the store. Huh. Now, if you want to buy it from a distillery, you have to go there because they can sell it for on-premise consumption or in a sealed bottle and you can take it home. Okay. Um, but yeah, you can't just like order online. That's weird. It's, it, yeah, it's really dumb. I mean, there's some things in there where it's holdover from when uh, where counties could kind of control whether or not they were dry counties. I think there's like two dry counties still in Texas. So otherwise, it's a stupid law. But like a, a uh, brewery in one county can't ship from there to a store in another county. Once they cross that line, they're in violation of, of, of laws. Because of the dry so county between. Yeah, well, even if there's not a dry county. Oh. That's- huh. Yeah, it's it's really dumb. Um, like, or we would have people uh, uh, like bar owners come in and they'd buy their stuff and stock up on things. And then one of them found out that we were actually in a different County than he was, even though we were like 10 miles away from each other. And he had to stop coming over there because technically every time he did that, he was risking having the Texas government come down on him and remove his liquor license. Oh, wow. That's yeah. It, it's, it's archaic holdovers like that, that, that annoy me, but. I'm guessing Kentucky's probably one of the most lenient and lax. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, I know. Uh, I don't know if it still is. Well, no, not anymore because they have a liquor store. But uh, Oldham County used to be was a dry county. We have a lot of dry counties though in like Kentucky. If, if we wanted to buy alcohol, we would have to come here into in, Louisville, to Jefferson County, mm-hmm. just to get a, a sixer. Mm-hmm. Uh. I know on Sundays you cannot buy alcohol in Southern Indiana. Yeah. On Sundays here, it has to be between 6 a.m. and 2 p.m. Or no. No. Or is it uh, vice versa? 2 p.m. 12, 12 to 6? Uh, yes. I think it's between noon. Midnight to 6. <laughs> yeah. You can. And you cannot serve alcohol between 4 a.m. and 6 a.m. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to start to feel a little bit better about some of our laws here. <laughs> it's like, you, you, liquor stores can't be open on Sundays. Or 
all that does is it just means that they're very busy Saturday nights because everybody's just going to go ahead and buy oh, everything wow. they're going to drink on Sunday. Let's see. Um, you can be served alcohol in a restaurant setting. It starting at 10 a.m. on a Sunday. Oh, and wow. I think it's like a, a 10 a.m. cutoff to buy beer or 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 wine at like a grocery store or convenience store on a Sunday. Yeah. But grocery stores, convenience stores don't carry liquor because in order to carry liquor, you have to pay the liquor tax, which is higher on every alcohol, including all your beer and wine. So it's not financially feasible for most places. So they, they just don't. Which also would mean that they would have to be closed or at least cordon off that section of the store on Sundays. Huh. Okay. That's probably why <clears throat> Aldi hasn't done that either. Well, their beer is pure dog shit anyway. That's true. <laughs> That's valid. It's fucking dog shit. That is that is 100%. Every, every alcohol that they sell is <sighs> ass. Ugh. It sucks. What was that, uh, their version of the white call? Vista Bay? Vista Bay. It, oh my God, that's, it really makes you appreciate White Claw. And that's no offense to you. There's no offense to me. (laughs) I know it's a bitch ass drink, but hey, I can drink a A 24 case. case Yeah. And still wake up the next morning. She bought a 24, she bought a 24 pack. (laughs) I got 12 for tonight. See, I've ever had one of those. Do you? But that goes back to me not literally liking flavored stuff like that I also don't like sweet things very much they're not sweet no there's no okay. sugar there's no aspartame there is no sweet you ever driven fat past a produce truck on the freeway and smelt Jesus the fruit Christ. on it can you just that's what a white claw tastes like have you drank a lacroix uh yes okay it's an alcoholic lacroix yeah okay so there's no sweetness it's just bubbles and a little bit of flavor and some yeah, the alcohol. closest I've had is I forget who made it. It's called Ranch Water. It's basically just unflavored alcoholic seltzer. Yes, which is yes. really dangerous because it, it legitimately tasted like I was drinking water, and I could have t- taken that entire can and just downed it in one gulp. Yeah, <laughs> I'll tell you what though, the hangovers do not suck. That's true. <laughs> White Claw hangovers are <laughs> there is no hangover. Yeah, it's easy. Oh, no, I don't know if it, it's a good or a bad thing to admit this. I don't really get hangovers anymore. I just like stay tired. But unless I drink yeah. like red, red wine will mess me up. Uh, that'll kind of mess with my head a little bit more. Um, sake a little bit. Uh, tequila, definitely. But I don't drink that very much. Uh, anything that tends to have a little bit more sugar in it, like tequila does, that'll mess with me. But like bourbon or beer, I could just like sit down and fire up a video game on my computer you just sit there and sit for like four or five hours into the early hours of the morning. And then other than being tired, I'm fine. Hmm. Now that might just be my liver just giving up and saying, I'm not <laughs> going to yell at you anymore because you don't listen to me. I went in the towel, white flag, <laughs> just I'm over it. It's like when you keep fucking up and your dad's like, listen, like, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> like I've told you I'm done, and you just keep doing it. I just don't it's, even it's like care anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the first time you come home late at night and you expect him to be sitting in the chair when you turn the light on and he's not there and you just kind of go, oh, this is bad, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever have a curfew growing up? Oh, yeah, but I was never really and still am not incredibly social. So that wasn't really anything that I had to worry about being home by. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I had one. It was back in my uh, my early teen skateboard days. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I always had a curfew, even in college. <laughs> my my curfew was at uh, at t- uh, ten thirty on Friday and Saturday night. <sighs> but there was there was one time that uh, my parents went out of town. This is when <laughs> I lived in Tennessee, and me and uh, my my best friend I I call him my brother, but he's my oldest friend. We're still friend best friends now. Uh, Lincoln Park was in town doing a Lincoln Park and Cypress Hill. We're in town doing a concert and Edema. Remember Edema? Oh, okay. Not a yeah. lot of people remember Edema. Oh, I remember like... the name. I couldn't tell you a song, but I remember the name. But uh, they were in town doing a concert and my parents were out of town. So we went out at two, three o'clock in the morning skateboarding. We would go to schools and at whatever parking lot in horrible neighborhoods was available to us. <laughs> you were lucky you didn't end up in the hospital or dead or dead. Yeah, because in Memphis, it's the hood. 
Raleigh. <laughs> yeah. You went to Raleigh? Yeah. We went everywhere. Jesus Christ. Raleigh, Orange Mound, White Station. We hit all, we hit all, we went on a fucking tour. See, that, that was back in the day when everybody knew it was dangerous, but you know, nobody really cared. Now you know it's dangerous and you stay the away. Well, we were in the uh, predominantly uh, African American neighborhoods. Oh. Two, two white kids skateboarding at like three o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. <laughs> you had some cojones. <laughs> well, no, never no, mind. No, nope, no adults in it. sight. It was just us. I mean, there was no, it, it, there was no P Diddy in sight. It was okay. <laughs> <laughs> we did not get P diddled. <laughs> P diddly. I mean, yeah, that's that, that kind of look is the you're either out there to buy something or cause trouble. Right. I mean, I got that doing uh, like DoorDash S deliveries. It was for a different Texas based company uh, in a couple of na- neighborhoods where my car definitely did not like look like anybody else's. I definitely did not look like anybody else. And every eye that was in a front yard was staring me down while I was looking for the house I needed to drop this food off at and get out as fast as possible. Yeah. See, that reminds me of when <clears throat> right out of high school, a uh, friend of mine and well, used to be two of my best friends. They're like, hey, you have a car. Can you help her move some stuff? I'm like, sure. Where were you, you know, packing and moving to? She's like, well, we're going to load up the car at her place and then take it to my place. And then we're going to load it up on the U-Haul and then head out to Chicago for school. I was like, okay, that's cool. So where am I going? So here in Louisville, working in the industry, uh, I've worked at the visitor center. I've worked at the, uh, worked at multiple hotels. So when I send people downtown, I tell them when you hit double digits at like 10th street, find a way to go back to the single digits. Don't go over 10th street. That's, that's the, that's the no bueno, no bueno part of town. (laughs) Well timed. I know he was waiting. He was waiting. Uh So she said, uh, 22nd and Oak. I said, excuse me, Uh, excuse me. What? She said, 22nd and Oak. I said, you do realize it is two females <laughs> <laughs> two females driving um white females in a not nice neighborhood to uh the heart because there's like 50th street or something is this the west end yeah yeah so it was like in the middle of it and the whole time i'm out outside like trying to load up the car going oh please i don't want to die please oh god get in the car windows up look straight ahead don't look at anybody just just don't don't (laughs) just don't (laughs) i don't want to die only 18 we gotta go (laughs) body where we're going we don't need roads oh thank god (laughs) (laughs) that would make make everything simpler if you could just fly over (laughs) right just dive right out just nope just just Fly over the house, roll down your window, drop the door dash order down. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, the parachute budget would be kind of high, but you know, most of the time you can get away with just dropping a burger without one. That's true. What's, what's it going to do? Break? Yeah. It's in the in that red. Uh, you don't get a tip. That red bag. That it's it feels pretty. Um, the red bag. The, yeah, the insulated thing. Oh, yeah. the heat bag. Yeah. Doordash has a heat bag. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, it's like technically a- I worked for them, but I never actually did any work for them because the jobs that were available were terrible. So I ended up working for the other company. <laughs> but what they don't tell you is uh, when it comes to taxes. Oh boy, I had already like what is it a ten ninety nine where you're contracted and you have to pay everything. Yes, I had already done that with a security job before, so I, I knew to expect that. I just I was logging all of my miles. I was logging all of my gas while I was on the clock. I was everything so I could deduct everything. And then gets to the end of the year, and I know how much I made, and it's not very much. And I get my paperwork from them, and they're telling me I made three times as much as what I made. Turns out, I think they were doing some shitty tax stuff by claiming that they had paid me all of the value of the stuff that I had delivered. Yeah. Because technically... They were seeing it as reimbursement, even though I was using a debit card that went straight to the company's bank account. They were considering it reimbursement to me. So if I had not tracked every single penny, I would have been on like, like 
owed taxes on like fifty thousand dollars or something like that. Jesus. And I definitely did not have that saved up. I was I had made a fraction of that because I had some people who bought big orders. I delivered to some nice neighborhoods and they like order two hundred dollars in food delivered. Holy Whoa. shit. What was this like Super Bowl party? Uh, just some neighborhoods around here. I knew the good ones. I was I mean, there say- was one house I delivered to a couple of times where I, the t- the the cost of meal from Nordstrom's, mind you. I didn't know Nordstrom's had a restaurant. Wait, what? Uh, I thought that was. I told I. You know what we saw Nordstrom today, the one by your work. Yeah. I told he asked what it was. I said, "Oh, that's a clothing store." It is, but at oh, least okay. the one that I went to go pick this up, they had a re- little restaurant inside. Oh, nice. And I think she had a kid that. This is completely assumption. They had some kind of special needs, some sort of fixation that had to have the exact same meal every yeah. night because every time I delivered, it was the exact same meal and the drink was milk. And that's not a drink they offered there. The person taking the order at the restaurant knew the person that I was ordering for. That's how often they went there for it. So I had to think it was something special like that. But she was so nice. It was a like $15 meal and a $20 tip every single time. And it took me 15, 20 minutes to do. Oh, so that was a fantastic tip. I mean, the one time she was at a different house, I forgot to update it. So I got a $40 tip. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. 1099 is below. Yeah. Yeah. I've done a 1099. Yeah. Same. Twice, three, four, four times. That four one. Times. That's why you just get paid allegedly in cash, allegedly. Uh-huh. And then nobody ever knows. That's, that's honestly how the haunted attractions work when you work at like a haunted house is they mm-hmm. can under the table pay you $599 and 99 cents that extra penny. Then you have to start writing taxes. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's kind of how we got our money the first couple years that we were in. Yeah. That's when we became management to actually earn that. And then one company I worked for was like, we're going to pay you this much a night. And then I added it up and I was like, uh, no, 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 because then that means I have to do taxes. <laughs> yeah, you have to fill out a 1099. I'm like, son of a bitch. <laughs> Suddenly you're making less than the extra they're giving you. Yeah, I'm like, can you incorporate yeah. like this much for this much time because I'm in this department and then this much for this time because I'm in this department? Like, can you split it up? Does it have to be in the same department? Is there a loophole? Can I work over here in this other department under my middle name as a different person? <laughs> right. Right. Now, one of my early jobs was at a pet store, and I, I even then, as a young kid, I knew that the, they were dodging taxes by paying us in cash. Mm. So on payday, you went to the office, they handed, handed you an envelope full of green. And just nobody just, you know, reported anything. It was fine. Interesting. I wouldn't make him very much there anyway as a kid. I, I, I was falling underneath the required amount. Plus, Texas doesn't have state income tax, so nice. Oh, <laughs> yay. <laughs> that actually that never been to texas right no you said you never want to go to texas i would totally live in texas oh okay what next door to beard y- yeah <laughs> we would or, we would take our shirts off and drink whiskey and all play the video time. games and play, all the time and play, no, no no we fight each other with lightsabers and that's not a euphemism nobody read into that we actually <laughs> have lightsabers yeah that's true he's he has a is your is yours a, a custom or is it an actual Darth Vader replica saber? It was the first run of the Force FX lightsabers that they did back in. Oh, damn, I don't know. It was probably during the prequels. Hmm. Um, Holy early two thousands. Yeah, yeah. See, I was working. I, I don't know. I can't remember. I was working at GameStop at the time. It would have been early two thousands. Damn. So I've had I've had those for about twenty years. How many do you have? Just the two. Okay. Is are they I, I want, red? No, I've got the I've got the uh Luke Skywalker blue and the uh Darth Vader red. And I wanted to get the Mace Windu purple, but I couldn't afford it at the time. And then it the run ended, missed my chance. I mean I can still get other ones now, but yeah. Not the same. Yeah. I, I want a collection of lightsabers. I can hear it now. I really do. Where's Mike? He's at beer house. <laughs> They're playing what Star are they Wars doing? in the backyard. <laughs> They're having a lightsaber battle in the backyard while drinking bourbon. Wearing their Jedi robes. With no shirts. 
<laughs> you look you look over the fence and I, one of us is like throwing a force push together and they <laughs> like and, and mike doesn't jump back and I go i hit you with that you go no uh you didn't I was like, yes I, mean, I did i have a force field <laughs> that's not how it works <laughs> boys 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 who wants a fruit snack oh, beard, beard, i gotta go in i gotta go in uh, my wife says i have to go eat dinner now i'll be back later <laughs> Hey, babe, oh, she's, beard the night? She, she doesn't believe in fun. Why do you listen to her? Hey, babe, can, can Beard come over and spend the night tonight? <laughs> can we stay up is and watch it, Star Wars? Is it okay? <laughs> beard, she said if you want to spend the night, you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and we built a, a, a blanket for it in the living room. <laughs> My God, I could see you both doing that right now. Like, I am picturing it right now. Gonna... Look, if you really want to get into building a fort, you go strip a mattress off the guest bed. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're oh my fucking God. children. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to order Domino's pizza and watch uh, Ninja Turtles 2 Secret of the Ooze. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that is taking me back. That is taking me oh way God. back. Is it not, though? Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, yeah, man, child, man, child would be an appropriate title. I'm just gonna have to accept it. Oh, <laughs> no. I mean, I'm sitting in front of a wall that's got a Millennium Falcon, a warthog from Halo, a picture of an X-wing. I, have, I was gonna say you have an X-wing behind you, <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. Yep. No, the Halo Three picture. No, so yeah. what, what you see here is adult. Mike and Tabby. What you don't see on that side is over <laughs> over here on on the ceiling is a cardboard cutout of Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. There's a I, I stole from her brother. There's a batarang. There's two lightsabers over here. There's two lightsabers. We've got a Kylo Ren picture, trick or treat, <laughs> comic uh, stack of comics and graphic novels. Game of the Thrones map. Um there's there's children's yeah, things in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i used to have more but i some of them got lost or given away during one of many moves and i wish i had kept them yeah <laughs> the beer is not good when it's warm when it's been sitting no sour is good when it's been sitting out oh that hurts yeah oh that hurts <laughs> so I, I, left the other, poop. I left the other two in the cooler so when we do the live later <sighs> okay so when it's warm it you know the uh oils off the lemon peel yeah that definitely isn't like i just sprayed my mouth with pledge like yeah oh <laughs> the the lemon the dry lemon and it really pops doesn't it does it the the dry lemon no it's not flavor. no it's the you know when you get like you're peeling an orange and you get the orange oils and like you lick oh, it and it's like that okay, that kick yeah. in the mouth where it's like <laughs> Okay. Like that's in the back of the throat right now. I got you. I'm watching your soul attempt to leave your body right now yeah, while you it process. It really this. is. I'd rather it leave outward through the mouth than through the butt. <laughs> I'm that's, what the that's called a fart. Oh, She's gonna oh, fart her soul out. I have done that many of times. That's her spidey sense. <laughs> that's my superpower. <laughs> I'll shame my superpower. <laughs> your spider. Uh, my my. It's her Peter tingle. <laughs> wait what i have a peter no that's what it's called in the mcu instead of a spidey sense it's called the peter tingle that's what peter that's parker's what... spidey i know called. but i didn't know it was called a peter tingle. yeah it's called a peter tingle that's what aunt may called it that, yeah that's what aunt may called it <laughs> it's a peter tingle why am i just now knowing about learning about this go go watch uh spider-man far from home i did i don't remember that watch oh it again. Okay, I remember that. It's either Far From Home or No Way Home. Yeah. One of the okay. homes. I think Not it might have been... I think it might have been No Way. Was it No Way Home? Yeah, because I don't think she was in it much in Far From Home. No, because he was in Europe. Yeah. Yeah, it's a Peter Tingle. Yeah, like, he, like, he's start, like he's starting to run out the door. She goes, oh, is it your Peter Tingle? He's like, <laughs> spider sense. <laughs> don't call it that. MJ's not here. Of course, it's not my Peter Tingle. <laughs> uh, That's what it is. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I like that. 
That's hilarious. I call it that when I think of something that excites me. <laughs> when you look at that uh, cut, that cardboard cutout of Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. Yeah. That's yeah. a Peter Tingle. Yeah, that was my first Peter Tingle. <laughs> <laughs> I was seven years old with that Peter Tingle. <laughs> that is, uh, well, I don't remember 19- how old I I don't remember how old I was, but I definitely had there was a like full picture, like front page on the newspaper, like the like the entertainment section that had her on it. I hung on to that for a long time. Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman predates uh, Kimberly the Pink Ranger. Oh, by a year. Ninety two, because Power Rangers came out in ninety three. This came out in ninety two. Wow. Yeah. So I used to always pretend that I was too good to watch Power Rangers, but I absolutely did. No one pretended that you're no one's too good for Power Rangers. Power Rangers is too good for us. Yeah, but yes, if you go back, right. we didn't deserve it. Yeah, but if you go back and watch it now, it's like, what the fuck? You know what, though? Last year, when that 30 year anniversary that still was out, terrible, but it was so good. Oh, I had a fucking blast it was watching fun, it. it but it was me. terrible. Did you see that? Did you watch it? I didn't watch it, but I've seen uh, like video breakdowns on YouTube oh, about it. So I did, it's on Netflix. It's real. It's definitely. I mean, I know that there, there's a little bit some s- sad backstory to it, of course, as to why some of the characters aren't there. Oh, dude, they. But, op- that's yeah. how the whole fucking thing begins. Yeah, yeah. They rip your heart out within the first two minutes. Like Tommy is in it, and but they just voice. So they use. Uh, they voice over who it's. His brother wasn't it his little brother? No, his brother has been famously dead for like twenty five. Well, I years. thought it was somebody in his family or something. That no, was it was it was, was him. It his. Yeah. Oh, oh, they they did. had a they had somebody in the Green Ranger suit, but they just dubbed over. Oh, they pulled they, di- dialogue from they other pulled dialogue and hiyas. No, no, no. Of Jason Davis. Uh, yeah, but didn't didn't he film like no, half of that no, film? No. I thought he filmed some stuff for it. And they used that as part of the intro. I, I thought that too, but they upon didn't. further review, oh. no. Oh. Yeah, Jason okay. David Frank was... So they pulled everything from like previous ones. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I never met the guy, but he lived in my neck of the woods for a while. Oh, wow. Yeah, Texas native. I actually was yeah. aligned to meet him, and I was so nervous and starstruck that I fucking left. <laughs> and this I was, get that. This was like <clears throat> five, five years ago. Wow. Oh. I watched yeah. him look out Where? in front of a seat at Galaxy Con. Was he? In 2019. He was here. That's the last time he was here. Was that the one where Ross Marquand and, and yeah, uh, David uh, Yost was there? Okay. Okay. The one that he got the picture with. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. David Yost, uh, Jason, uh, Austin St. John. They were all the red, blue. We and, didn't do and, Jason David Frank's line. Well, we stood there, but it was too long. No, I stayed, but then I well, saw I him know, like, but... I need everyone to say, when I hear watching and hearing Jason David Frank in front of my face <laughs> say it's Morphin Time, I was like, I can't do this. I, this is, I, I'm not cool enough for this guy. He's His gonna... Peter Tingle was too overwhelming. <laughs> he gave me a Peter. He had Shirley. to get out of there before he embarrassed himself. Uh, he gave me a V Tingle. <laughs> he made me trans. <laughs> he made your P turn into a V. I was like, oh man. I see what chicks like about him. He kind of is. Oh, I gotta leave. I gotta leave before I go all the way. I'm getting way too close. I'm way too close. I gotta go. I could actually see you meeting him, going, Mister David Frank, Sir Jason, for Sir. I I uh I'm gay. I love you. Look, I got missed. I got misty eyed when I met Sting, the wrestler. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine how it would have felt if I'd met Jason David Frank. Okay. I almost cried just meeting Sting. Yeah. Wow. He was a big part of my childhood. By the way, happy WrestleMania weekend to everyone who's celebrating. Uh, but yeah, no. So I don't. I don't know how I would have felt with JDF. I was. Fine you might have. You might have done like a what is it on Community when what's his face meets Levar Burton and it's he just freezes up the entire time. Yeah, I that exactly. Yeah, I would have. I would have shut down. <laughs> I would have been fucking AI, just stoic. <laughs> I mean, I can't, I can't laugh. At, I'm, I'm kind of chuckling, but I shouldn't be laughing because I've never taken that opportunity to potentially meet somebody like that, like like one of my childhood heroes. So I have no idea how I would handle it. I would probably just stutter and stammer and make absolutely no sense, pass out, and then wake up on a like a bed in the back of an ambulance. I almost cried. When Greg Nicotero? Oh, Greg Nicotero. Yeah, I was hyperventilating, and I'm like. 
he's like 10 feet away from me <laughs> now, now and then it went from that to okay we're having a conversation and he's talking to me yeah this is so cool oh my I god mean, I, I, i've interacted with some people that other people would be kind of enamored with because i worked at a store in in a, near an area of kind of the houston area where a lot of money was uh and not far from an airport and i'd have to check receipts on the way out so i would check receipts of football players that like the manliest dudes standing over off to the side were like shaking in, in like in their boots because they couldn't stay believe that they were in the same store as this person that i had never heard of because i don't follow football um See that I mean, there's cool. there's a, a local rapper, Paul Wall, that everybody around Houston knows, and he would come into the store all the time. It was the nicest dude, and everybody was just starstruck. And I just was like, I just talked to him like any other regular yeah, customer because I didn't know him <laughs> as that. I uh, when I was working at Meyer, I met Rick. Rick Patino came uh-huh. through my line. Yeah, the University of Louisville basketball coach at the time, who uh, is now famously known for rape. Oh. Do you know Rick Patino? Oh yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but this was before that, and everyone was like, "Oh, that's real." I'm like, and when he came up to me, just to be a dick to him, I said, "What was your name again?" <laughs> 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 He's like, at the time, he was he was the guy here. He was the man. Mm. Everyone, everyone was obsessed with, and i just because he was a fucking great coach he led louisville to so many championships one and it got taken away because of his rape charge and that was 11 years ago i thought he had more than just nope. one uvl got stripped of that title because he couldn't oh. keep it in his pants oh wow Way i know go. my shout out to louisville do you remember when i was working at that hotel in southern indiana and mario soto stayed at my yeah. property Cincinnati Reds MLB Hall of Famer Mario Soto. Yep. Mm. Nice dude. Yep. He was so nice. I met Al Snow a lot. Damn. But he lives here. He does. Yeah. So it's nice. I, I do have a question for you, Tabby. In that industry, have you ever had somebody that you actually know show up at a hotel that is out like, like in their local area? So why would they be staying in a hotel, especially when it's booked for two and they show up solo? Actually, fun fact. My You're very... going to call me out right now yeah, like sure. this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, my very first hotel when I first got into the hotel industry. Shout out to Harsha. You... Uh, no, it wasn't Harsha. Oh, it was, it, it really was Clarion. That's where you met Ro. Where I met Ro. The woman that introduced us. Yes. So this hotel used to be amazing back in the day. It had a conference center. It used to hold comic cons and conventions and it had a full like didn't kill switch engage play a show there mm, not long after you no left. no I no did. no so no 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 no. so i was only there for three months um i knew i should have known it was bad when i trained for eight hours my first day and on the second day my trainer called in and half of the management got fired oh yeah day two. okay I should have known. I should have known. But it had like a restaurant that was like sports themed. Um, it had this huge lobby, an indoor pool that was a nice a hotel, Olympic sized pool, and they had like poolside rooms along the side. It was like jungle. Wasn't tropical. it on out in the east end? Yeah, it's off it's bluegrass. Like bluegrass and Hurstbourne, wasn't it? Yes, oh. right off sixty four. Yeah. So, um, I was uh, like. Like I said, it was huge. They had like a, it was split. So it was like six, six floors on one part. And then like you had a crosswalk and then there was like a whole second tower of rooms. And then the convention center was behind it. Um, they used, like I said, they used to hold comic cons and um, like horror festivals, movie festivals, things like that. So it used to be big back in the day. I was working the 3 to 11 shift on a Friday night and I'm not paying attention, trying to do my little thing at the computer. As one does. And I look up and a gentleman walks up to the front, to the front. There's no NDA. He's no longer the governor anymore, but he walks up to the fucking front desk. And now my dad is super political uh right wing retarded uh yes uh conservative but gay. yes yes and gay yes uh 
so I know like it's the, okay he's the, my father-in-law the previous <laughs> yeah, I know like all of the governors in the past and I know the present governors and everything so he comes up California and he puts his ID and credit card on the on the countertop was it Steve Bashir? no oh the cut before him it was Paul Patton I don't know who the fuck that is so Paul Patton was like I don't know four term governor something like that the joe biden of kentucky he really was <laughs> oh i got that right he oh he was so dumb so he puts his id and stuff down on the counter and he's like i'm here to check in i'm like what the fuck is paul Patton doing at my shitty ass hotel right now like what the fuck so i'm like all right mr Patton, nice cool let's do this and here you go here's and how many rookies. hookers will you be required uh-uh, no, no 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 he goes fantastic thank you can you leave this key packet down for a friend of mine that's going to show up i said absolutely sir and thinking maybe it was like a conference but then why is there a conference at eight o'clock at night on a friday going on (laughs) okay cool and so picture a blonde peg bundy Ooh, hold on now strolling up to the front desk hold on now don't get your peter in a tingle yeah, no. I was, <laughs> listen, as a as a fan of the show Married with Children, right? Katie Seagal, even now, Katie Seagal is she's kind of no, a bad. I didn't mean like the face. I meant like the outfit. Oh, spandex. Now the face was like. Does she have the the hair too? Yeah, she had like the poofy blonde, but it was blonde. Ow! When she walked up to the desk, she goes. There's a key here for me. Jesus, titty fucking crap. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me do that again. There's a key here for me. I need a key. It was more Southern, and it sounded like this. It was kind of like Phyllis Diller with a country accent. Let me tell you what, now, y'all got a key for me or what? Yeah, a key for me. <laughs> I was key. like, okay, what's your name? And I don't yes, even. Sir, I ma'am. Don't, <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> I don't remember her name, I, but I do remember him because he was the governor, and I was like, oh, my God, the governor's out here for me right now. Oh, my God. You were part of a scan- a political scandal. They, yes, I was. Look at this. And then I was like, after I gave it to her, I wasn't really thinking. I need and to tell I gave Shane to, to put that on the show, Doc. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so she walked away, and when she walked away and went up to her room, I was like, wait. That's not his wife. That's his room. Rutro. I know. That's when you put it you'll put a note for housekeeping to do extra cleaning the next day on that room. Oh, yeah. You know it would be funny. You just yeah. ran up to the hotel room door mm-hmm. and just started like banging on it going, ah, ah, ah. Your wife's here. Your wife's here. <laughs> what was his name? Paul. Paul Patton. Knock on the door. Paul! Are you in there? Paul, I know you're in there. Here. I know you're there, Paul. And he's in there in his tidy whities Oh, my God. Oh, no. See, I didn't think I was going to get that much story out of that question. <laughs> Judy. Judy. Judy what? was you, his wife. You got, a, you got a gold nugget there, man. You got a yeah. gold nugget. Yeah. Because, have... because the only closest thing I have to that is my mom worked in, like, overnight desk one time and had somebody who she knew through church um, and knew was married show up to check in late at night. And my mom's back was turned and she's like, I need to check in. She turned around and looked up and that woman's eyes just went huge and she took off running out the door. <laughs> no, I had a, I had a former governor of Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Shout out to him. He looks like a fucking sleazeball. Well, he's a, he's a, apparently politician. he acted like one too. So yeah. Well, he's a politician. What'd you expect? Ew, that guy. Yeah. He looks like Bob Dole. <laughs> <laughs> look, show put him up to the. He should look up Paul Patton. Send her the, yeah, look up. I'll, I'll, I'll look him up. Oh yeah. my gosh, no! It he was, looks like Bob Dole. <laughs> he's no, he's he's, he's probably Bob the Dole. same height as he's Ross Perot, Perot, though. He's Bob Dole's cousin. <laughs> oh my god! Do you guys remember Ross Perot? Yes. Oh, he kind of look. Yeah, he kind of looks cross between Ross Perot, Bob Dole, and Nick, uh, Mitch McConnell. Yeah, it's got a little bit of that net going on. Could you, could you imagine if Mitch McConnell was having a sex scandal? <laughs> like, oh, what nope. The fuck? Nope. 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 Uh, As nope, who's turtly nope, enough nope. for the turtle club? His wife doesn't even. <laughs> sex scandal? Yes, please. Please. God, yes. See, that's what I'm saying. 
I love it when people send me Mitch McConnell memes, TikToks, Instagram videos. No. <laughs> Mitch McConnell. Oh. So, <laughs> okay, never mind. I was going to say something, but if I put it out there, somebody will actually do it and you will never forgive me. It'll be in your search. No, history. send it to me. Come on, let's go. I've seen worse. I'm friends with porn stash. We- I was going to say you plug enough AI data into a uh, into the algorithm, you could get some Mitch McConnell porn pictures. Oh, Jay, do Ooh. not get any ideas. Jay, I'm going to use your entire you, name. You like to subscribe <laughs> to uh, patreon.com slash whiskey hell inside. <laughs> <laughs> Send it to whiskey hell. Doc, or whiskey is, it, hell. Is, it, is it weird? And I hope he doesn't hate me for this. I know he'll laugh about it, but is do you think like that's like something like Fitz was like, dude, this has to exist. I have to find it because yes. people will laugh at this. Yes. People will love this so much. It I is so funny. Like I mean, Fitz, there, there is a reason Rule Thirty Four exists. I will not look it up despite my VPN or a incognito browser tab because I don't want to see it. But I guarantee you, somebody has drawn politician porn. Again, Jay, this is for you. Find it. <laughs> you can find anything. Hold on, Jay's texting me real quick. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's half a farm report. <laughs> <laughs> he better have a good one. It's the turtle farm. Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, now I'm just picturing Mitch McConnell's face on the head of that turtle. With, oh you God. know, it's up on the back of another one going. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is Mitch McConnell's only fans. They just use turtles. <laughs> they just use turtles because they were scared that children will. They want to make it family friendly. <laughs> Wait, so does that mean he can... It's okay, it's nature. Yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, the movie. <laughs> I was. Just... I don't know what's going on in your head right now, but you are making lore up. You're creating a new world in your head right now. Dude, I can I see it. Fuck up and make McConnell TMNT fan fiction. <laughs> well, Teen- I'm going to drink Ooh. to forget that. <laughs> it's not even teenage. It's Mitch McConnell fan fiction. <laughs> Ew. It's, that's that's all that turtle video is. I really want to Google that and see if there is Mitch McConnell fan fiction. You know, there's going to be some hardcore. I know someone who will find it. Who? Michaela. Jay. Oh, um, do I want to put her through it? I'm talking to her. I got her on the horn. You're texting while we're at work. She was just job. Te- she was. I just- will oh. not click this and read it. <laughs> My first result: McDreamy, McSteamy, and McConnell on <laughs> long reads. <laughs> you want to send it to me? I'll take the. Sh- I'll take it. I'll. I'll. I'll do it. Put it. Put it in the whiskey insider chat. Whoever. <laughs> <laughs> no context. No context whatsoever. Oh God. Why, 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 bless her heart. Why do I feel like Al is going to be the one who clicks on it? <laughs> it says Stevie. Shout out! Shout out to Al. We love you, sweetheart. You're awesome. <laughs> oh, 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 oh no! Did you click it? You clicked it. You clicked. Is it a picture? It. Is it a picture? Oh, nice. I think that's Ted Cruz. <gasps> that's it, not worse. It, it's not. It's not nude, but there's a look going on between him and somebody else. Tipper, oh, Gold, you slut. Okay. Okay. I'm here now. I'm here now. Did you just make it's a con- gamble? Did you just do a gamble on the podcast? Senators Ted Cruz are Texas, and Marco Rubio are Florida. Are nestled in one another's arms <gasps> and sweat glistening on their muscled chests. They kiss softly and tenderly. It's the middle of the night in a hotel somewhere on the campaign campaign trail, and they are in love. I'm changing the title of this episode. Right now. <laughs> it is no longer a beer of liberty. It is, it is Ted Cruz fan fiction. Oh my God, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That is such a conundrum, though. It's like two super Republican conservative guys like doing gay stuff, but like, what the fuck? Man, that gay. <laughs> uh, and I think you. Oh, so if you're an animal, which would you be? Asked Ted. Let me think, says Marco. A manatee. Like a manatee? Man, manatee? A hey, manatee. This isn't the full thing. thing. I think it's behind a paywall to actually read it. It's like a break a breakdown of weird political fan fiction. It's, it's an article. The title of this episode will now and forever be known as 
Ted Cruz fan fiction. I cannot believe there's <laughs> Ted Cruz fan fiction out there. I can. Uh, Wait, does that mean that there's like housewives and well, you know though some well no of course there's housewives. Well, Ted Cruz. You don't have fan fiction, but you go to Pornhub and find housewives. Housewife fan fiction for Ted Cruz, oh. where they write it. I, that's still probably going to be on the hub. Let me ask Hi, uh, Ryan Hacker. Hub doesn't do fan fiction. Nobody does Pornhub. Look at their logo. It's the Pornhub logo. <laughs> Just different. Yeah, I love that it includes the political uh, party and state for everybody mentioned in this. It's got little segments. You think there's on the Senate there floor, senators are voting on whether or not to end the filibuster for Supreme Court nominees. Dean Heller, Republican from Nevada, weeps in the strong embrace of Mark Warner, the Democrat from Virginia, torn between his desire for moderation and his fear of a primary challenge. Be brave, Warner urges him. Heller sniffles into a handkerchief. Oh, it's whiskey hell board right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right so i'm gonna put this in there it is no context oh my god i can't uh, wait are you gonna put it, uh, in it, but, uh, but it yes but Please. to be clear it's an article about c- congressional fan fiction it's not actually fan fiction but it's like somebody breaking down the and an- analyzing how it's sh- quote reshaping our political world <laughs> Let's see oh, if catches. my God. Are you going to put it in the insider yes. chat right now? I'm, I'm putting it there right now. Absolutely. No, I'm not even going to type no context like I usually do. Yeah, don't do that. No, just drop it. I want to see who catches it first. Wait. Who do you think is going to catch it? Oh, first? my God. You can see the picture right there. Wait for <laughs> it. Gonna, who do you think is going to catch it first? <laughs> Wait for it. Nobody's uh, read it yet. Nobody's read it yet. There, there are other things. There's a, a search for McConnell stories on Wattpad. Oh my God. Mitch McConnell works archive of our own. I hate the fact that he is still in whatever he's in. Like, why? I'm retiring in December. Politico know. has an article that says introducing Biden fan fiction from 2012. <gasps> no. <laughs> no. This is wild. Wild. This is amazing. Okay, we're going to have to cut the first part out. Let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. <laughs> no. I'm not going any further down this rabbit hole. I, it's going to get darker, and I I, I need to sleep tonight at oh, some you're point. Gonna have to go, you're going to have to go to the dark web for do, that shit. Do you, do, you, do you think that there's Kamala Harris? Oh, 100%. Oh, sure. 100%. For sure. He is a strong, independent. Beard, pull it up. Oh my god! <laughs> That'll be on his browser history. Gross! This is your Google. I, my VPN is on, and I am an incognito window, and I'm still going to wipe my hard drive when I'm done. <laughs> that's what. That's Weird, what I every think person. I hear a really loud knock at your front door right I'm now. Gonna, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You know, my- that's fine. As, if, as soon as I start hearing helicopters, though, I'm in trouble. Oh yeah, start running. Come this way. Run There's this way. Spotlight we'll coming through your window. <laughs> <laughs> you got a red dot on your forehead. I'm gonna wipe so- my. I'm going to wipe my hard drive down, which is every man said after having sex with Kamala Harris. Men have had sex with Kamala Harris. She has kids, doesn't she? Well, you know, test tube babies are still a thing. Oh, that's true. You don't need a dick to put it in there. No, all you need is a turkey baster and a willing participant. Yeah, or yeah. a slingshot. If, you want to, if, you want, if you're shooting for distance. No one wants to get close to Oh, it. you can water balloon it. Their water balloon full of cum at Kamala Harris. <laughs> oh. That's the name of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> I just need random people to come in this water balloon. I'm just going to launch at Kamala Harris's vagina and see if we get her pregnant. Oh my God. <laughs> Let's hope it's not yours. <laughs> all right. All right. Taproom fans, uh, our male audience, now's your time to shine. <laughs> Everybody. Nope. I'm out. <laughs> I'm infertile. Nope, I'm out. Uh, I've been you know, t- I'm sure it exists, but oddly enough, it is not, not yet. showing up on a search quite like McConnell or oh, Cruz did. You know oh, what? I know where to find it. Where? Let me let me check the uh the legal dark web, aka Reddit. I mean, on Wattpad, there's Kamala Harris stories, but they all look like, oh god, <laughs> uh, not good. Okay. 
I just saw a really bad hand drawn ripped Donald Trump, Alpha Donald Trump, X Omega male something or other. I'm not clicking that. No, don't do that. No, all of this says even on Reddit, Kamala Harris will homo well homost. <laughs> Hold on, let me take a drink of my alcohol. Kamala Harris will host a marijuana reform event with Fat Joe, rapper. Okay. Fat, rapper Fat Joe. That's weird. Okay. You remember Fat Joe from the movie Scary Movie Three? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so yeah, it exists, but it doesn't turn quite as weirdly sexual as fast. Oh God. Ooh. we've gone to places we're never going to be able to come back from that's, that's right okay. if we were if we weren't actually friends before we are now that we have shared intimate stories and websites about mitch mcconnell <laughs> like i i physically get ill looking at that man's face and i, I just don't like, imagine that turkey waddle going back and forth and those I, it, uh, th- so I have this one friend from college, and we still stay in contact. And it's literally through, Duncan. yeah, yeah, I knew Duncan, it. yeah, Duncan uh, rules. Fucking love Duncan. Shout out we, to Sam Duncan; he's the man. We the, the only way that we communicate in our love language as friends together, like, is through TikTok and TikTok videos. And he sends me because he's in Tennessee and I'm here, and he always sends me anything he finds on Mitch McConnell, and it just gets worse and worse and worse. <laughs> and I love it. There's this one kid on TikTok who does an amazing Mitch McConnell impression, and like he just videotapes himself for three minutes making like weird facial expressions, you know, like when McConnell had his fit or stroke or whatever where he just froze where he just froze and just like stared and his eyes went like different directions and he was drooling i'm too chill (laughs) blue screen boom (laughs) arnold schwarzenegger's mr freeze but he's like (laughs) voiceover in the background where he's like does cherries really he doesn't say that i'm too chill shut up he freezes i know freeze yeah so you're bringing the whole batman thing back george clooney no it's just arnold schwarzenegger <laughs> Only good dreams. Call me Harley Quinn again, bitch. Harley Quinn, bitch. George Clooney, Batman. Mm, we're we're both retarded. Man. <laughs> <laughs> so and it's like, do cherries really taste like cherry lollipops? And do the birds fly north instead of like it's it's great. It's so <sighs> I'll send you one. Because it's it's hilariously accurate. Yeah, I feel like I miss out a lot by not having Instagram or TikTok, but I also like that I don't have that on my phone. I, I went minimal with most of my social networking stuff years ago, and, I, and I, I'm not looking back. I like the TikTok for the doom scrolling, you know, put the kid to bed and you're laying in bed at night just trying to chill out and you find stuff. It's you know, uh-huh. like you, you can... Um, relate to it you can uh hilarious videos cute videos you know my favorite thing about the mitch mcconnell (sighs) freeze meme is yeah is the song oh the one that they play it's it's this song right you gotta go up a little bit higher because yours is quiet yeah it's (laughs) it's kind of coming through I recognize it, but I think most, at least for me, I think most of it's getting cut off by a noise gate or something. It's called aquatic ambiance. We yeah, can... that's the uh, Donkey Kong underwater music, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> but most of the time, that that sound will appear on like some '90s nostalgia. Like, remember these fun snacks and these fun things to do back yep. in 1997? Ugh. And it was like Domino's Pizza, Block, but shit that me and Beard are gonna do. <laughs> we're yeah. going to Texas. Oh yeah. <laughs> we're gonna go to Blockbuster, get Dominoes. Are you gonna wear windbreakers? We're gonna, we're gonna rent movies that have boobs in them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then after we have the Dominoes, we're also gonna have some of those pizza pockets. Oh, my God. Hot pockets. Sti- 
No, those little uh, t- uh, Totino's pizza rolls. Oh, oh, you want me to cook yes. the rolls? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Crystal Pepsi, Surge, and Doritos 3Ds. <laughs> mm. That's the best. Mr. Pib in the can that had the faces on it and wasn't round. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, that unlocked a new memory. It did. Holy shit, Beard. Woo! What have you done? That was, that, that was pre-surge. I think you just broke the show. <laughs> oh, done. Oh, my God. Or uh, yeah. the, the red can of Jolt with the lightning bolt on it. See, I never had Jolt Cola. I had the Jolt Energy Drink. That was my, that, that was my crack. The cola tasted like fucking Pepsi. It tasted dead up like pe- from what I if I remember correctly, it just tasted like Pepsi. I thought it was like a flat RC. Yes, RC. RC Cola is still good. Yeah. You can go yeah. to the street to Kroger. R- Underrated. I love that RC still exists mm-hmm. and no one fucking. Oh, yeah. They're like, no, we're not fucking dying. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> we're here. Fuck Coke. Fuck Pepsi. I remember after I mean, 80% of their product has to get pulled off the shelf because it expires before it gets sold anyway, but it's, they're sticking around, damn it. Oh, they're not going. I remember after T ball games in the summer of 1991, that's what we had in the cooler was RC Cola. Nothing but. Because it was cheap. Yeah. And it was fucking, it's still fucking delicious. Yeah. Gunners had RC Cola. I know. I bought a two liter at Kroger like a month ago. It tastes amazing. Okay. So what about this one? Those basically unnamed, unmarked plastic barrel looking things full of sugar water. Oh, those are actually called barrels. Oh, the really? barrels, I, the fruit? Yeah, yeah. The ones that Heather gets for the kids. Oh, with the uh, if you take the cap off, the aluminum. It's like off, aluminum off. It's you like, get cut. It yeah, cuts you. Yeah. Either. Talk See, I didn't even know those things are still around. They are. I haven't oh, seen yeah, those things are. in decades. Uh, uh, Sam's or Aldi Costco. sells them. The barrels? No, no. Aldi used to. Walmart. Yeah, they, Walmart. Walmart sells them. Walmart and Sam's. Yeah, it's it's like a predominantly like Walmart item. I mean, it's a huge okay. Walmart owns Sam's Club. Well, yeah. Yep. But yeah, it's but, it's it's Walmart strictly. Since we're on the nostalgia drink thing, this might be a regional thing. Knee high blue cream soda. No, we had knee high peach, dude. We had peach and okay. green. Me and my dad, when we would go fishing, we would get a uh a twelve pack of peach knee high. One of my favorite sodas to date. Still. Yeah. My brother and I, back when we were real little, I was probably like five or six. That was the that was the thing. Yeah, is the the corner store just down the road? And I say corner store, I mean like it was an old like wood frame building that like the old probably used to have like living spaces up top. It's two stories, but it, there's no reason for it to be like one of those old um, mom and pops, like the yeah. OG mom and pop shops. Yeah, yeah. And I've I've looked on Google Maps not that long ago. I'm pretty sure it's still standing. Which is pretty cool because I'm going to be going up there into that area for the eclipse on Monday. So I'm gonna I'm hoping to drop by and visit it. Do uh those those types of gas stations have the best sausage and biscuits? Mm. I think the ones that I've been to. Yeah. Do. Usually they have good like hot foods. Yeah. Mm. The the Chevy dealership that I used to work at in Carrollton, mm-hmm. the it's a Vallejo. Across, it's across the street. Oh yeah, they have those sausage and biscuits. They sell them there. Something about them is just amazing. Because see, around here, if you get like a sausage and biscuit, like that tiny your typical breakfast stuff, that's going to be coming from like a franchise chain location. Yeah. If you want like mom and pop type food, it's going to be in the even more kind of indie franchise gas stations that has just some random taco, like Mexican food spot in it. That's got food that you're kind of suspicious of. So it's either going to kill you or it's going to be the best taco that you had in your life. <laughs> oh yeah. 100%. So it's going to, it's either going to be food poisoning or orgasmic. Yes. Yes. Pretty much. Or luck of the draw. If, it, <laughs> if it's both at the same time, that's top tier gas station food. I think. I think. You're weird. I mean, I can't, I can't really judge much about gas station food because I was that kid in high school that would eat the hot dogs that had been on the rollers for like six hours. Oh, dude, I still, I'll still, if I'm feeling squirrely, I'll make a pit stop at the gas station and get a hot dog. I, I mean, you gotta, you gotta feel alive sometimes. You gotta take your life in your hands. Big take yellow. risk. Yolo. It's like uh, Jeff, Baby Buffalo from Moose Lounge says, mm-hmm. "Fucking Yolo." Fucking Yolo. Yolo. But yo-yo. no, 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 no. But he said that because 
He wanted me to drink that disgusting fucking uh, lot lizard shot. Yeah, the lot lizard shot. Oh, my God. Uh, okay, so the, blah, 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 the lot lizard shot is half part tequila and half part tuna fish juice. Yeah. Or the the water liquid from the, the... the water in a can of tuna fish. <laughs> yeah. It changes it from clear to like a milky yellow. No, wait. Is it tequila or Jack Daniels? It's Jack Daniels. It's Jack Daniels and the tuna fish juice. I don't know. Either way, it's got tuna fish juice in it. And no, I told him that Gross. if you mention that to me, him and Amos both, if you mention it to me again, I'm going to beat you. <laughs> I'm going to throw up in your car. I don't know. I said, I will, I'm going to drink and, a gallon of milk. Now, you can hear I will beat you in front of your wife. If you make yeah. it, I will make your wife watch me beat you. If we swap out the tuna juice for the, like the liquid that's in those, those cheap cans of Vienna sausage, I'm down. I could do that. I, I think that could work. Hot dog juice or like yeah. the hot dog water. Yeah, I could do that. Vienna sausages are good. Well, yeah, yeah. it's just small hot dogs. But would that be the male version of the lot lizard? I guess so. It's the dude Bigelow. There's a sausage involved. Yeah, see, you get the you get the hot dogs and sausage involved. Yeah, yeah. Call it a Deuce Bigelow. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I know Deuce, Deuce Bigelow, Bigelow, male gigolo. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rob Schneider's a stapler. Rob Schneider is. A <laughs> You've seen him as an animal and a dolphin and a girl. You now see him as wait, what was it? Rob Schneider, the blow up doll, the plastic fuck doll, the plastic fuck doll. That one episode of Porn Stash, yeah, the only podcast with a Rob Schneider plastic sex doll. (laughs) I'm never at least the only one willing to admit it. No, I'm the one that put that curse on them. You did. (laughs) (laughs) That's my voodoo. That's that's what happens when you drink for four hours hard liquor. Oh, the, well, that was, yeah. Oh, God. That was a four-hour episode. That was wild. That was crazy. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> released the Snyder Cut of podcasting. They did release it, and it's awful. I had fun listening. It got me through a half a work shift. I didn't listen to it, because I didn't really care. <laughs> I was laughing the whole way through. That was a great episode. We were supposed to talk about a porno Back to the Future parody. And that never happened? No. We ended up getting drunk and talking about... Everything uh, else but... Yeah. Yeah, for four hours. <laughs> it was great. Sounds like a good time. It was fun. I had a good time with it. <clears throat> I I thought it was great anyway, but that's just me. What do I know? Mm. But yeah. Well, Beard, dude, thank you so much for being on the show, man. It has been fucking awesome having you. So great. You you yeah, were worried, this is a lot of fun. You were worried that we were going to pull a McShane on you <laughs> and trick you into throwing up in your own sink and blinking your nose. And look. Now it's t- <laughs> look like I kind of mentioned earlier. I'm not an overly social person. I've kind of stumbled into doing streaming and podcasts and stuff, mostly to kind of push myself out of my comfort zone because you don't get to be a better person if you just stay comfortable all the time. Yeah, exactly. uh, so I always approach these things kind of like ah, I don't know what I'm going to bring to this. It's going to be terrible, but it almost always is fine. Uh, and I had a lot of fun. I, I this was great. Thank you for having me. But do you uh, do you have anything uh, in the works uh, on your end that you want to plug or promote that you're going to be involved with or whatever? Sure. People can find me most Mondays on uh, the YouTube channel after the weekend. And I think it's ATW Movie Reviews. Um, that's my buddy R2's, uh, R2 the Icky's channel. And he, JT Gunn, and I do movie reviews from kind of our childhood, 20 years and older. Oh, nice. Kind of back in the day. Uh, and unfortunately, 20 years and older now means we're into the 2000s. Um, <laughs> but I'm also a, a regular guest on a couple of other, like a Tuesday show, Thursday show. I've opened an invitation on a Wednesday show. I'm, I'm kind of all over the place. Um, and I try to keep people updated on, on X or Twix, as I like to call it. So if people want to kind of follow there and get updates and find out where I'm going to be, that's at Beard of Liberty. Hell yeah, man. Well, dude, thank you again for being on the show and uh, hanging out for for this episode. It's been so awesome having you. Oh, love it. We we always have fun taking our shirts off together on the uh, (laughs) the Whiskey Hell Insiders (laughs) chat. (laughs) That's, That's awesome. 
So if anyone listening wants to see that, you you have to subscribe to Whiskey Hell's Patreon. Yeah, but subscribe to our Patreon yeah. first, please. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, Patreon.com slash Grace Taproom Pod. That's where that's where some fun stuff is at. We have some cool stuff, too. We really do. It's great. I like our stuff. It's awesome. And you get merch. And you do get merch. We, you... give, away, we give away free shit. We really subscribe. do. We really do. Our Patreon. I mean, you get Last Call, which yeah. is us literally being drunk and talking nonsense. You get... Uh, recasts where mike and i recast uh older movies yeah the uh, uh the blockbuster era of movies yes uh also to throw this out there <clears throat> subscribe to the patreon and you can go up against mike in a recast to where i judge do you think you have what it takes to recast a movie can you beat me better than mike yeah that'll be the next one it will but we won't be doing another tap or recast until we complete our, if you're going to be well, in the Indianapolis area on April 27th at 5 p.m., you can please come check us out at Indie PopCon. We will be doing a live podcast reviewing 2014's Cooties starring Elijah Wood, who will be at Indie PopCon. He's going to fucking be there, which I hyperventilated when I found out he was going to be there because it's a fucking Lord of the Rings. And then Andy Serkis is going to be there. But also then- the movie is starring Rain Wilson. So if you haven't seen Cooties, totally check it out. It's fucking phenomenal. It is. It's it a-, a horror comedy zombie movie. It's a. Yep. There it is. And we will be reviewing it from start to finish and a live show and live front show. of a live audience super nervous at the same time because this one is a lot bigger than louisville it is going to be a very huge show Woo. we'll be next door to the uh lucas oil stadium which is what i like to call church because <laughs> 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 that's where pate manning statue is yeah well I elijah wood is going to be in the same building breathing the exact same oxygen as us that's true what's up elijah wood? oh my god all right well beard thank you for being again for being on the show man it's been awesome having you uh, and we'll see you tomorrow night. <laughs> you will. As we said to Fitz and McShane last week. We did. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you. And that is going to do it for this episode of the Grace Taproom Podcast. Five stars on Spotify. That greatly helps us a lot. And it you guys are awesome. Five stars wherever you listen to us. Yes. Uh, Tab, you know what to do. As always, thanks for listening to this episode. Don't forget to check out our link tree at linktr.ee slash Gray's Taproom Podcast 2. You will find many ways to support us. Buy us a coffee because we will be hung over after this episode. You can subscribe to our Patreon. Three tiers are available for you. Get your buzzed on for $3, get tipsy for 5 or fully loaded for 10 Don't text and drive, don't drink and drive, and always drink responsibly. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Tap room closed. Good night. Bye.